My name is Mohammed Sariu. Uh, I'm the product manager of Bulwark, a for Sophos uh, product. So uh, let me introduce our company Bulwark as a value added distributor for Sophos. We have been last 15, more than 15 years, we are uh, doing Sophos and CyberRoam. And uh, we are the, one of the very good uh, value add uh, distributor in the region. Now, the thing is, uh, what's, what is the main agenda for this session is, uh, first of all, we'll be doing the introduction for Sophos Cloud Optics. Uh, it's a uh, cloud optics uh, platform, like it's, it's for uh, uh, monitoring all those things. So we will discuss more, morely on the cloud platform. And we will be looking after for the use cases for the cloud optics. Then uh, we'll be having a Q&A for that, question and answers. Then uh, last, we'll be, we'll be conducting one quiz with, uh, we will be uh, providing prizes for uh, first to three winners. Okay. So as a, as a distributor, we are, uh, we are uh, established in 1999 in the Middle East, and we have established in India in 2017. And we have almost 22 plus products right now uh, with the uh, different uh, all the security vendors only. And we have 700 plus business partners in Middle East and India. So we have an excellent record in delivering. Uh, we have a very good uh, product portfolio and we have a very good customer service as well. So whatever uh, we you need, will be needing for any technical support or any implementation support, we can give it. And uh, we uh, we offer award-winning products with excellent customer service. Uh, and whenever uh, you need any value-add service, we will be giving like we can provide you the customer session or customer uh, demo, POC, or those things we can give it to you. Uh, there is no, uh, it's, it's uh, we can do it uh, easily. And uh, we have dedicated sales team, we have dedicated marketing team, and we have dedicated technical team for Sophos. So, uh, my name is Ravi, and I am from the pre sales uh, Sophos. I take care of uh, Oman, Kuwait, Qatar. Uh, so, today the topic is uh, Sophos Cloud Optics, and we are going to go through, walk through. What is cloud optics? What exactly it resolves? What challenges customers face usually in the cloud environment, multi-cloud environment? And uh, what are the challenges they face? How exactly we are going to resolve them? And with that, uh, we will uh, we will start our presentation. So cloud optics. So first of all, uh, every security presentation starts with statistics. So 70% of the customers are hit with cloud security incident in the last year. And the criminals are only taking advantage of these weak points. Some of the weak points is it's a shared security model. Okay. Uh, when we talk about the shared security model and uh, we will get into more details about what is a shared model in few slides from now. And also what is, and how exactly Sophos is going to resolve those challenges. So when we talk about cloud security as a shared responsibility, it can be double-edged sword. Public cloud providers such as AWS, Azure, Google offer customers a great deal of flexibility in how a customer builds their cloud environment. This helps the customers to innovate in a ways that they are, that aren't really possible at a cost effective, which are currently on premises. The consequence of this flexibility is that cloud Public cloud providers cannot completely provide customers virtual network, virtual machines or data while in the cloud. Instead, they run on a shared responsibility security model. They ensure that the security of the cloud while customers are responsible for anything they place inside the cloud. So anything, the infrastructure is provided by the cloud provider while the what data they have in the cloud is responsible of the cloud provide, uh, cloud consumer. When I say cloud consumer, he's the one who is going to consume the services provided by the cloud provider. So things like physical protection at the data center, virtual separation of the customer's data and environments, that's all taken care by the cloud provider. 
but whatever you put in the cloud well that's your responsibility that's the customer's responsibility you might get some basic firewall rule types to govern access to the environment but if you don't con proper configure it those for instance if you leave it will be left open to the entire world and that's the responsibility of the customer we are talking about and the toughest challenge to get in that security posture right is accurate visibility of your infrastructure when you put something on the cloud, you want to gain complete visibility of how the assets are being placed, what kind of roles those are given, how much access is given to which user, does your code has enough rights, or the rights that are given to the code are more than what they are required. So in the second slide, if as you can see here, these are the your responsibilities as a cloud provider. Um, as a both as a cloud provider and as a cloud consumer and this is not shared by sophos this is something available on the azure platform and if you go to the azure platform um, these are the these are the components which are which are shared on the azure documentation so here data classification and accountability is complete responsibility of the cloud consumer uh, or cloud customer the customer is responsible for the data classification and accountability on each type of the cloud models on prem whether it's infrastructure as a service or platform as a service or software as a service so all in all data classic when you are putting uh, some data how the data needs to be accessed what kind of data needs to be accessed uh, who is accessing it who is she making changes to those data that is all responsibility of the cloud customer and similarly we have client and endpoint protection which is as you can see here everything is based on uh, the client itself or the consumer cloud consumer so, so only the physical security as you can see here the three components IAS PaaS and SaaS it is being provided by the phys only physical security is the um, provided by the cloud provider rest all is the responsibility or a shared responsibility of the consumer as well as a provider. Let's moving moving further. So here are some of the um, what we can provide to the customers. Now Sophos Safeguard is the Sophos encryption here, uh, which is a security objective where we can do the data classification and accountability, which can be encrypted. And we have Sophos servers and endpoint protection, which can provide complete security here and uh, Sophos UTM XG. You are aware of all the products that the Sophos has, but at the different layers of this security, we provide different products to actually help you to gain that visibility and control of your network. We'll get into that, but most of the more today's topic is more about cloud optics and what is what we best do at it. So uh, these are the security best practices, uh, what custom, what cloud, Providers have provided. This is something on the documentation of the Azure. Azure themselves recommend adding security capabilities of an Azure partner. So they are talking about firewalling, intrusion prevention, vulnerability management, application control, antivirus, botnet protection, which is not being provided by them, but they want us or some partner or yourself to actually let the customer know about these um, gaps and fill those gaps. So, so, so here we can see the background of your responsibilities and security products, uh, Sophos products now available beyond the services like base, basic firewall rule types. Uh, and as you can see, some of the familiar names here in there from our security products like XG Firewall, Intercept X for the server, and of course, uh, with the cloud optics. Um, let's understand what's the difference between the cloud and on-prem and why the attackers are so successful in causing the damages to the organizations. After all, um, when, we are, when we are looking at same type of targets as you have in the private data centers or in on-prems, you have been securing for those for the years. So what's the difference? What's the difference that is making it so challenging? So in the, let's start with on-prem uh, or private data setups. I think, uh, I think the security is like a building where all the access goes in and out through one single point. 
and it's same for your network as well where traffic comes and goes out through a well defined gateway all protected by your firewall from that nice and straightforward but clouds cloud blows that concept apart completely when we talk about the cloud you need to think of your network more like a building with multiple windows multiple openings and they equal and they are equally multiple potential access points for someone or something to get in and get outside we are talking about databases we are talking about s3 buckets we are talking about kubernetes as a service um, which is uh, dockers and everything now the internet so take all all it takes for someone to misconfigure a root table a route table in the firewall or an access in the firewall and your virtual machines running in the private cloud workload or hosting sensitive data are suddenly accessible from the internet everything then once one resource is visible to the cloud on the internet everything is open to the public one single misconfiguration and uh, that is all it takes for uh, your resources to be published on the internet so challenges that uh, we are seeing across the across the network um, is with 20% of 26% of, of the organizations telling us that managing cloud costs was the key challenge 27% were concerned about maintaining the compliance and regulations such as gdpr or soc2 compliance which is more about maintain how the security is across all the all the services that are being provided by the cloud provider and 41% are concerned with being able to identify and respond to security incidents across their cloud environments so what is the more important thing here is that um, while the cloud is best if you are able to manage but the visibility and the monitoring capability is not there now there's a lot of chaos in managing security across the cloud environments primarily because user experience for you when you have hundreds of services configurations within your cloud environment how do you know what's going on as a security provider or as a security um, within this organization as a, from the SOC perspective you are not too sure what's going on inside the network the next more important thing is the resources in the cloud are very short lived uh, means you if you go back 5 to 10 years you might have deployed a vm on a bare metal and you knew that it would exist for months and years if nothing has been done to it but now with the cloud this is completely different scenario you have serverless functions which come which operate in microseconds containers that exist for few minutes or few hours and then uh, vanish the third most important problem that we have seen is that we have devices generating more data more devices are there you have no control of what what devices you have in the cloud and it's 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 because it's it's very impo it's not even possible uh, for humans to do this manually to identify those data that is being generated by various resources on the cloud and more importantly these are released at a faster velocity companies might have realized once a quarter that i don't need this server anymore so shut it off i want a new server or a server farm coming up this uh, uh, this shopping festival dubai for shopping festival i want five to six times of my servers and it can come up so we are talking about elasticity where the the resources are coming and going and the data generated by them is come is being generated and then stored somewhere and the data where it is stored is also elastic in nature so th there are a lot of things that are going so monitoring is became becoming a big challenge for the for those who are managing the cloud so these are all the ch challenges with the modern cloud architecture but monitoring needs to be evolved that's why we highly recommend customers deploy a cloud security posture management solution so we are talking about today a cloud security posture management solution a tool that combines and extend various different disjoint cloud services on a single interface that will provide you visibility of threats and security settings 
along with that it's also going to help organization to ensure compliance is maintained and track and optimize cloud spending one of the big problem that we have been talking with many cloud customers is that they are not aware which resources how their budgets are being spent in the cloud environment there is no such visibility and with the cloud optics they are also going to get that kind of visibility so here is what cloud security posture management helps you with the help of cloud optics as a solution so first of all asset discovery and analysis so what kind of assets are there how much they are running what time of the day they are running how much they are spending are there any security loopholes that, that they are there um, if there is a threat detection on the cloud what is the next step that you need to do um, the spend optimization whether you can reduce that spend let's let's understand uh, when is the load maximum can i reduce the lower my um, resources during the time of the day and along with that it also helps you to understand security compliance and scans and you can integrate with multiple platforms which we'll discuss well when we go through the gui walkthrough so now uh, if you are aware that we have two products which can be installed on the cloud one is sophos intercept x for server with the edr and the cloud optics um, so which means that when a customer buys sophos intercept for server with edr he is going to have some visibility of the cloud and when he purchases complete stack of features of the cloud optics he is going he is going to get much many more features so let's understand what's the difference between the two products so when the customer is installing sophos intercept x with the edr on the uh, on any cloud server he is going to get cloud asset inventory and search is going to get what servers are running and he can search them in the edr you have the discovery live discovery and you can in you can search those assets for various queries that you may run you can do configuration scans you can configure guardrails which is again uh, security log collection and then AWS service integration and email alert. So when you have Sophos Intercept X, you have these only features. So let's say today a customer is going to migrate some server to the cloud. Uh, by default, he and he already has purchased this license. He has this license for the server area. That means he is going to gain visibility across this until the orange line. The features about that. But once he has the cloud optics, he can do the alert management integration, network visualization, uh, identity and access management, spend monitoring, infrastructure as a code scanning, and the REST API. So now we are so confident in the cloud optics that the team at Sophos even use it to protect Amazon Web Services, use it to host Sophos Central itself, um, which is currently being utilized by more than 150,000 customers. And the primary reason is that cloud optics shows them way to focus attention to proactively stop any potential breach points before they can happen. So Sophos Central, which is hosted on AWS, is being taken care of by the Sophos opt cloud optics itself. So let's see what is the smart visibility looks like. So here is an example of a topology and understanding which resources are deployed and this is an, a screenshot of uh, aws vpcs as you can see so the orange line is the vpc us east web and you can see what are the subnets hosted in that vpc and how it is connected to the gateway what kind of traffic is flowing through inside and outside so it is becomes very imperative to say that you can have a complete visibility of what assets you are hosting on the cloud on a single page. Many customers have one of the main difficult thing that when we talk about the customers, when we talk to the customers is visualizing what is there in their actual cloud or in their cloud environment and how does their cloud architecture looks like. And when they don't have the visibility, like in network, 
they are less likely to be confident. So the cloud optics not only shows you what your architecture looks like, it also shows you what to expect based on the ingested log flow. So what is coming in, what is going out of the traffic, um, whether those ports were configured correctly or not. Is there any port which is left open to the internet like RDP or SSH or port 80 um, or uh, SQL server is uh, directly interacting with the, uh, with the cloud. So even more importantly, you can show uh, how traffic may flow with the red line. As you can see here, the traffic is coming inward to a SQL server and we can see what ports are open. Like in this case, port 22 is open and outbound traffic is um, on this IP address and it is currently go connected to this IP address on this port and what security groups are attached to that particular asset. Uh, cloud optics also helps you with the compliance, uh, continuous compliance, which means we are going to continuously monitor for any compliance challenges that you may have. The solutions contain in a number of auto the box policies which relate to both security practices as well as map to security compliance regulations such as HIPAA, SOC2, PCI compliance, AWS itself providing GDPR compliances so you can keep a track of all the things. Um, you can also build your own policies. Uh, you, you don't have to depend on us. If you have your own internal compliance, which is more stringent than the policies that already exist, um, then you can easily, easily create your own policies and you can create compliance policies and you can start scanning your assets against those compliance scanning. Now, uh, we have inbuilt integrations which, um, with tools like Jira or ServiceNow. These are, these are mainly utilized by the cloud consumers because they want to, let's say if an asset is not bringing up, if there is a, um, they have created an automation completely on the cloud. So when an incident happens or any kind of uh, resource is not getting up or fail to start up or boot up, it automatically creates a Jira. So you may want to have the track in the cloud optics also. So we have native integration with all the third party products like Jira, ServiceNow, which can help you to uh, give out the alert information right on your dashboard on the cloud optics and can be used to create tickets which can then be tracked to completion so that you can track them based on the priority, ensuring the important tasks are never lost even during the release of the product. So this is a service now, um, Jira software integration. Uh, these, these are built-in uh, policies which help organization make sense of the requirements for, for pro proper security and compliances. Um, this is kind of collaboration that we are talking about with various other um, cl cloud-spaced alert monitoring uh, solutions. So the Jira and the service now and many other. Um, even we can integrate with the guardrails. Okay, now, uh, as I mentioned you at the very beginning, the Cloud Optics main dashboard shows a high level summary of, uh, it will show you high level alert summary. The same information along with the more details are shown in the alert section type here. So for example, here we are talking about security monitoring alerts are based on the policies that we just discussed like, um, the GDPR compliance, what missed, uh, how to remediate those missed points, what is the next step uh, plan, uh, next plan of action on those that miss the compliance. Then we have anomaly al alerts are generated with the artificial intelligence, which can spot anomalies in a user and a traffic behavior. And this is part of the package as well. The third thing that we provide is the AWS guard duty which kinds of keep uh, collecting the information from various AWS uh, assets, services, and the dev alerts will allow you to proactively scan your infrastructure as a code templates, um, like Terraform, GitHub, or you know Bitbucket. So they are different things and different uh, where you can get the code and run the code. So this is infrastructure as a code template that we are talking about. And the guardrails help you to prevent, detect, and remediate accidental or malicious changes in the network guard, in the network details while you are running these scripts. 
So next is very important is um, cost optimization. And so the cloud optics took uh, the same approach of providing most valued features of cost optimizing tool. And this helps the teams in real time to see how, how they are spending the money. Um, whether they are spending too much money on the AWS or Azure. Uh, and let, let me share all the features. Um, let me show, show that to you. And one of the key points that I want to highlight is 26% of the organizations are concerned about these um, cloud optimizing the cost. So, okay. Uh, if you are aware that the cloud spend is some kind of solution is already there with the cloud platforms. But the most important problem is that um, these are these are not dedicated solutions. Uh, they, there's a huge difference uh, between the GUI. Either they are very complex to configure or they lack integration between the providers and it's a more of a DIY project. So that means do it yourself project. So you have to invest time and resource into building customly do it yourself projects, which uh, which has its own lot of burdens with it. So this is uh, uh, this is what uh, how it looks in the cloud optics. Uh, you can uh, configure. You can choose what environments, or you can, as you can see here, we have multiple uh, multiple cloud environments running, or we have selected all of the environments. It has AWS, GCP, and Azure. And how much of a daily spend you are making on different assets? Um, what is in comparison with other cloud uh, if you have multiple cloud environment uh, we will go through the ui and we will explore those features um, so we'll talk more about this in the in the ui but uh, this is this is uh, this is how it would look various uh, graphs what is the cost uh, for one year three months whether what is the cost uh, that you are incurring on aws what are the different assets that are consuming total cost on the on on your cloud environment um, it can extend up to 12 months and these logs are maintained up to 12 months and ability to highlight individual services for more details helps the customers to actually determine which service i need to optimize so for example in this case elastic search service is too, taking too much of you know too too many too many queries are being fired and you all know that uh, elastic serve, service search is based on the number of queries that you make uh, in case of virtual private cloud it's uh, it's more of um, how much time you are enabling that's um, that particular asset inside the network in case of guardrails how many uh, how many logs you are receiving per minute or per second or per per hour per day can you reduce that so different assets are uh, different services in amazon or azure have different cost associated with them so for example uh, the cost for maintaining uh, bringing up a system is different cost for guardrails is different cost for elastic load balance is different so you you are not able to identify but with the help of a cloud optics it gives you summary of where the exact spend was made and if you can optimize that Uh, here are some of the some of the other two you can see that how it's uh, taking budget like aws cloud trail it's taking amazon virtual private cloud has suddenly seen a spike why this was a spike um, you can monitor side by them and the big this is the big differentiator against the cloud providers native tools the ability to track multiple service side by side for um, many of the AWS services. This is this is this is simply not possible without the cloud optics. So this helps you in accountability for cost among the teams by separating environments, regions, and improve visibility and reduce waste spend. This is very important. And we have executive summary also, which can be sent directly to your uh, to your management. Uh, this is a overview of. of how the money is being spent, IT budgets are being spent. 
So AWS recommendation, one of the key areas to highlight to customers uh, are recommendations provided to help optimization costs, particularly for AWS. Uh, and for the AWS also, uh, Azure also, we can directly integrate with the free Azure advisor service, providing multiple recommendations to optimize costs and resource availability. Um, so this is uh, this is um, this is very important. So um, and it's going to go going to get better, more better. Okay. In the future, uh, the cloud when we integrate Intercept X with the firewall, it is not limited only to the um, on prem. It is it is similar. It works in the similar nature when you host some of the assets on the cloud as well. So today's synchronized security already shares real-time threat intelligence between the Sophos servers and the firewalls hosted on the public cloud environments. And it is a single license covering on-prem or cloud deployment. So independent of where the assets are, it still continues to operate. Um, now with the cloud optics, this uh, now complements existing Sophos solutions for public cloud. So it extends our existing platform for servers and networks and adds um, for the cloud security posture management. We can now set out to accelerate, discover analytics, response um, with um, with the future products that we have, future projects that we have. So here is what we have: um, world's most trusted security platform. So we have Intercept X for the endpoints or the servers hosted on the cloud management. And we have XG Firewall, which can be as acting as a gateway for all your cloud, cloud assets. The cloud optics will be there to manage uh, your cloud security posture. And MTR to actually respond to the threats if there are any. And the most important thing is everything is hosted on a single platform, which is Sophos Central, one single GUI, and it is all integrated together on a single on a single GUI. That's the best part of it. So let me let me go through uh, the third party uh, and what exactly. This is simple licensing. Um, the licensing model is very very simple. Uh, we are only counting the servers and database instances across all the environments and provide and color customer to segment accounts for greater security. So which is not there. So we have industry led um, Prisma Cloud, Cloud Guard by Checkpoint, Cloud One Conformity by Trend Micro, AWS and Azure. So we have um, we have different uh, services that are being provided by other players in the market, but now how exactly Sophos differentiates itself. The way that we show, first of all, Hi, is Devindra. The, yeah, Devindra. I'm here. Hello. Devindra. Yeah. We have some questions. We will answer in the last or uh, we will answer? Yeah, we will answer them at the last, yeah. Okay. okay. Right. Now, the best part is that uh, it is not a DIY project. Everything is simple. All you need to do is enable a read-only access to the cloud environment, running some simple commands, which I will show you in the walkthrough. Um, and it's very simple. The licensing is also simple. The number of assets that are that you are hosting, simple, straightforward. It's not based on okay, how much of traffic you are generating, um, like complex in the Azure and AWS. Can it show multiple cloud assets, infrastructure as a code? Can it show um, um, cloud, you know, code as a service? So this is where the cl the cloud Sophos uh, Sophos cloud optics differentiates itself. We have the best of the features combined onto a single platform. Do we have remediation platforms? Yes, we have some of them but not, but we are working on it. But MTR service, which complements the Sophos Cloud Optics, will help you to remediate some of, uh, most of the threats that are there. So, uh, so let me, let me quickly go to, uh, 
so one of the most so the one of the most important thing that i want to convey is that in summary is that cloud optics helps you first of all to gain provide the visibility of what exactly assets you are running in the network the second thing is it helps in you in the asset discovery and it also compliance it also helps you in the compliance it also helps you in remediation processes uh, the threats that may have that may be there and along with that it also provides you complete visibility of what assets you are uh, how much you are spending on the cloud so now uh, let me quickly go through the gui of the cloud optics so this is the gui as as soon as you log in uh, you are welcomed with the dashboard of your security posture so you can you can see you can see how many hosts you are running on the aws you have different capabilities here it welcomes you with the critical alerts high alerts medium alerts once you click on this it will go it will share more information we'll come back to the alerts in a few seconds uh, but it gives you a complete uh, picture of what is happening inside the azure gcp or aws so now uh, one of the key things is network visualization let's click on um, network visualization and here is the network visualization for sc lab so this is our sc um, sophos scs and you can see that we are hosting multiple cloud environments across across our environment across our um, network once you click one of them it can show you where is the vpc what what is the gateway and everything So again, different SCs have different labs. So spread across the globe. We have Azure also. I'll show you mine on the Azure. Uh, so here is um, SC testing and uh, here is, this is mine, uh, the lab that I'm hosting. So let's click on it and check. Uh, this is hosted on Azure. So once you have connected to it, now you can see that I have hosted <coughs> XG, so force XG and what is the what is the subnet it is hosting and what are the assets behind so now you can get to know okay this is my xg uh, firewall and this is how my network is behind and how they are connected to the internet <clears throat> there are many other scs that uh, so here is again uh, this is for the Japan, one of the engineer in Japan. So you can see that there is an XG firewall and behind it, he has hosted some of the uh, services, uh, some of the assets that he wanted to host for the testing purposes. <clears throat> now, I so the network visualization helps you in what kind of traffic is passing through, what kind of, uh, uh, you know, what traffic is passing inside the network and everything. So here you can choose uh, traffic, which will show you if there are any connections inbound or outbound, it will show you complete uh, details about that. It also helps you to visualize IAM, which is identity and access management. Uh, let's see. So you can segregate different based on the environment. So we have different environments, Sophos SC is for Sophos. SG and so forth, cloud optics stands. So different, uh, different um, users. So you can see that EC2 service has been provided to multiple users. Who are the users? We can check them easily. And you can also filter them. So here uh, you can filter them based on their role, uh, group, and you can also filter them based on their services. If there is any overprivileged uh, user, we can also enable them. So he has more access than what is required to have. And different icons to show different uh, capabilities. User button is different. Uh, the group button is different. And we have uh, roles, different roles with the help of helmet. So, and you can take a complete screenshot of it uh, uh, just by clicking here. Or if you want directly, so this is the IAM. Let's open that and show that to you. <clears throat> So we can take and 
this is somewhat what a screenshot would like it look like similar to what the first network topology it would make sense more uh, you can also make a full screen out of it so different capabilities are there here and now we'll go to the spend monitor one of the most important feature that we have seen so is uh, the current month uh, we can see that the forecast is um, we are going to spend about seven thousand uh, dollars currently spend is four thousand and we have aws which is currently the spend is around one thousand dollars so this is based on different environments mostly testing environments but uh, uh, but as you can see that uh, we can see that it's going to from the previous month we are going to spend eight hundred dollars more so let's click on it and we'll go into more details <clears throat> so now we have more detailed view of, of where we are going to spend the money this month uh, we are going to spend ec2 on other amazon virtual private cloud we are going to spend some uh, what was this increase what is the increase that we are looking at and that means the, the engineers have enabled more of the virtual private cloud instances and which of those cloud instances we can also see <clears throat> So overall, there is a gain in the gain in the total spend here. We can also this is for AWS. If you go to the Azure, it will show for the Azure. So this is more for the Azure and different services. What is the storage spent? Uh, we are spending more on the storage, it seems. So similarly, so it gives you complete picture um, uh, for this. Then we have the com uh, policies. Uh, different policies these are the out of the policies and you can also create your own custom policies if required so let's say if you want if you want to run for um you know for aws um, you're running a cloud and you want to pci compliance on top of that so you have pci compliance azure or gcp all you need to do, do is run uh, and uh, take action on that enable enable that one you can you can go in multiple inside it and i want to show you the alerts so that you can make sense out of this so once you enable this uh, it uh, once your compliance one your assets miss the compliances it will generate these kind of alerts and these are alerts uh, and these alerts are based using the machine learning it understands which uh, which needs to be prioritized for you to take action upon and let's click on the alert id and go inside it now this is a description and it also shows you remediation update the rules for securities default security group or deny all traffic by default so if you are not having this um, it will be very you will not be able to identify okay what to do next and it also shows you what is the resource when was this last modified when was this last seen and uh, here environment it also shows you this is inside this one uh, pgsc testing and uh, okay let's uh, let's see some more alerts here uh, yes this seems interesting uh, ensure the ssh access is restricted from the internet see this user has allowed ssh access to the public and it's a big problem right uh, it is opening up to ddos and there are some compliances which are failing because of this and let's let's enter this so let's understand what's more inside this uh, so let's click on this uh, here is a summary from the internet what happened description and how to remediate it so it is also telling you to go to this place and do this and here also it shows you the, uh, the control tab the picture best practices where you need to go back and check one of the interesting and it also shows you okay this is not just one resource i believe there are multiple resources so you can see and this is florida i see and uh, everything so these resources are in testing so they can come up and go but yeah okay so yeah some of the high alerts so this helps you to prioritize what action needs to be tested and our focus for as a so far is we are going to focus on 
cloud optics also. So if I recommend that you go after the customers, talk to them, identify who are your customers, first of all. Uh, so for the cloud optics, it's basic, it's very important to understand who is our target customer. Uh, not everybody, not every cloud consumer. Um, the customers who are going to their operations uh, are who are doing operations on the cloud mostly are our customers. Uh, so let's say if a customer is hosting one or two assets on the cloud, that will not make a difference to us. But if the customer is doing complete operations on the cloud, those are our customers. DevOps, DevOps customers are our customer, uh, cloud optics customers because they will understand the value of the product. They will be able to uh, see the value in the product because they these are the guys who face the challenges that we we are talking about day in and day out they they are not able to identify how the resources are coming up where am i spending the money how to reduce that spend how can i have more control over the network uh, what is my inventory uh, the most important thing is what is my inventory there is no visible visibility on that so the cloud consumers, uh, mostly the DevOps customers, are able to get a most value out of this. So if a customer is having uh, five servers on the cloud, uh, he may or may not see the value in it. So DevOps customers, so, uh, let's like talk, uh, who are completely depend on elasticity on the cloud. They are uh, testing different product capabilities on the cloud. Those are our customers for the cloud optics and at the same time don't lose the opportunity so let's say if they are only having five to seven servers on the cloud don't worry about it you can still go ahead and pitch them um, the um, the edr component of the sophos intercept x and they can still gain the visibility as you can remember in our last slide let me let me share that to you in our last slide i have discussed that there are some features which are still available for the cloud. Let them appreciate the features that are there and we can go back to them and say, okay, customer, now is it good time that you want more visibility and more, um, more capability on the cloud visibility? So this is what, so don't lose that, those opportunities. You can still go ahead and tell them that, yeah, you can still get the cloud optics visibility even with only sophos intercept x for server with idea so they can have cloud asset inventory and search capabilities however they will not be able to get the visualization network visualization but yes they can have the cloud asset inventory at least Okay, so this is very important uh, to understand and pitch the right thing for the ask the customer uh, what are their challenges? They will always tell you visibility is the main challenge. Compliance is the main challenge. They will tell you that I don't know what serverless codes are being running on my environment. I have to share pricing to the, I am not able to guess what will be my spend next month. What percentage increase? How am I going to get that budgets from the top management? These are these are the most um, you know challenges that the customers are facing and this product will help them to utilize that and gain the visibility gain the control of the network gain the insights of the network uh, on their cloud infrastructure okay so now uh, let me get to the questions uh, you have okay so let's see oh there are a lot of questions Yes, uh, yeah, let me show that to you. Um, the one of the question is how does the cloud optics get resource costs from the cloud platforms? Does it include any inbuilt APIs to communicate to get all the details with multiple cloud platforms? Yes, you guessed it right. So let's go to the ad environment uh, and you can see, let's say that I want to integrate a, an AWS platform, okay? This is a kick start setup. All you need to do is uh, follow the few steps. Uh, you have to launch a stack. That's it. If you want to do full setup, cloud formation, CLI, Terraform, you can do that. If it's Azure, just get the get, get the all the um, code 
from with the curl command run this run this script on your cloud environment in the powershell and that that's it done uh, it's it's a read uh, read only access there is no write that we are doing unless and until you are talking about aws for the remediation processes um, so yes it's a more of a api integration uh, with the various cloud services uh, monitoring different at different locations so the customer doesn't have to run various at different locations on the gui we have kubernetes uh, that can be integrated infrastructure as a code with the help of github you can integrate github here bitpocket uh, github is the most used for the um, most used platform uh, kubernetes and swarms and uh, those those can be done here 